So this is Dr. Kraus again. Um, I said I would post a video with some spider tips and tutorials. I don't know that I have a ton to say because this I think spider is pretty uh, self-explanatory. Uh, one thing I wanted to change um, is a feature that I really like in Emacs is to automatically have all my new files start with some of the kind of magical incantation lines that we need. So I googled something like spider template files or something and came to this and so here's the kind of all you need to know. I'll demonstrate this in just a second. So let me launch Spider. Um, exactly where you find the preferences. Actually, it looks like those instructions are for the Windows version that it would be under Tools. Um, in Mac, there's just a preferences underneath the name of the... Oh, hold on just a second. Wait for it to finish booting. Um, and so if you go to Spider Preferences, wherever your preferences are, under Windows it must be under Tools, under Mac it's not, I don't know where it is, um, in Linux, but if you said Editor, and then go to Advanced Settings, and then hit this guy that says Edit Template for New Modules. And so I've already tweaked mine. This was the whatever the um, template was that it came with, so apparently it puts in a date stamp and the name of whoever the user is. But I added these two lines. I'm actually going to add a blank line and save that from matplotlib.pyplot import star and from numpy import star. We talked about this, I'll, we'll talk about this in just a minute some more. Um, that is slightly sloppy in the minds of some people, um, but it's kind of how I like to run things. We'll talk about that in just a second. So now if I go to a new file, it automatically does those things. Um, and maybe I've got one too many blank lines there. Um, but now I can do, sorry, if I can type correctly. A range and y is equal to sine of 2 times pi times t and get a figure and clear it and plot t comma y and show. And so if I run that it's going to ask me to save it first. Now, by default, it seems to choose some really strange places to save things. Um, on Windows, it wants to put you inside of some .ipython folder. Um, any folder that begins with a period or a dot in the Linux world is supposed to be a hidden file. So I've just gone, I would encourage you to just create a folder um, in your home directory or on your desktop or in your documents or something that is for 458 and have a Python folder or something like that. Um, I happen to have a folder for every semester and I'm going to put this under Python tutorial spider tips and I'm going to call this spider zero. And so I run that and my little plot shows up and everything is cool. Um, now one of the things um, you see that it has these little code analysis um, you're unable to detect to find names whatever whatever um, so part of why that matters if I said B is equal to C plus 7 and I save that if I had imported this differently it would know that C wasn't defined and it would tell me and in some people's mind it's important that you're like it's it's somewhat nice if your editor can tell you that you have an issue but if I run the code Python can tell me that it's not an issue or that it's an issue so I don't consider that to be a super big deal, but let's talk about that for just a second. If I said instead, import that, and you might see examples of this on the internet, if you Googled for any. And so I'm giving them kind of short names. And now if I were to save them, it automatically gets mad at me because it says C is not defined. So it's helped to find an error, but then I've got to know that a range is in numpy and in this case even my pi needs an np in front of it and then I've got to know that figure is really coming from matplotlib and so yeah. Now I've had to type, you know, the PLT and the NP a whole bunch of times, um, and that's kind of annoying. But the benefit is that I've now gotten my code to say, "Hey, wait a minute, C's not defined. This is going to be bad." 
I don't know that I would consider that worth it. Um, but if you prefer that, um, you can do it that way. Uh, the only other alternative would be to specifically say from NumPy import, and then you can give it a long list of if you knew exactly all of the variables you wanted out of NumPy. Um, I don't know. So this way right here with the import as PLT and the import as NP forces you to know, whoops, this isn't valid code because that's not there. Um, and now it's, again, telling me that C is not defined, so I'd have to get rid of that code before I could run it. And this is now perfectly executable code. I sort of like that it forces you to learn what comes from NumPy and what comes from matplotlib, but I don't know that that's super essential at this stage in your learning. So the other way, the from matplotlib.pyplot import star and from NumPy import star, makes it slightly harder for the editor to recognize the errors, but I just that's kind of Python's job. So you just run the code and it'll tell you where the errors are. And so, you, you know, on line 10, name C is not defined. I think this is a pretty clear error message and I could help find my errors that way. So whatever you want to do, but I would edit your template file. So that was go to preferences, advanced settings, edit the template. And I would put the, if, I, if it were me, I would put those two lines. And I think one blank line is enough. Yeah, I like that. Um, and now I've always got those two lines whenever I start a new thing. The only other thing I would say about Spider is if I was going to do... Um, well, let me just get a new file. And so if I said that my list was equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, sure. And then I said 4 item in my list colon and I hit enter it's automatically doing the indentation and I think it's even as I can tell automatically converting tabs to spaces for me there's I, I just like the spider editor most better than most IDE editors and so I, I think it's pretty reasonable uh, definitely would change this template file but other than that, and, and it does have code completion. Uh, the, I mean, I guess the other benefit of doing things this way is if I said np dot, I now have a list of every file in NumPy. So if I wasn't sure what the name of a file was, that would sort of be helpful. But as you can see, there are many, many, many of them. Um, so I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, whereas this other way from NumPy import star, it knows the A range command once I get the name right but I'm responsible for typing the entire A range command is that better or worse than np.ar in the end maybe it's the same amount of typing so either of those two approaches is totally valid set up your template file for what how you want things to work and then hit the little play button when it's time to run your code the only other thing that's mildly like I said, tricky is saving that file in a right folder. So if I, for example, had this file that I had downloaded from the internet and I wanted to load a data file, I gotta make sure I know where this file is. And so saving that in a folder where I know the name of it. Now when I go to run it, um, oh, I can't run it with other unsaved files open. So let me not save those challenges. When I go to run it, I could always pay attention to, it tells me what file it just ran and so it's in the directory you know my username SIUE classes fall 2015 blah 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 and so there's curfit.py there and so my I'm in that directory and I can type ls and I can see that I do have the data file okay um, if you run into any spider specific questions probably google them first I don't use spider a ton but if you can't find something or can't find a good answer let me know and I will help you as much as I can